What do a lot of parents do that screws up their kid? Refuse to believe their child could do something wrong. I know a few frick ups and their parents are either totally apathetic towards them or, no matter what the situation, blame other children or claim it's some sort of conspiracy against their child. Seriously. If another parent or authority figure called my mom to let her know something I was doing wrong or fricked up on, she was super embarrassed and I was in big trouble. Recently the same kind of thing happened to someone I know, and instead of her mom using it as a lesson to learn, or admitting her child may have made a mistake, she's suing the company. Great life lesson to teach your kid don't worry, if you screw up, it will hire an attorney to sue them for you. Refuse to apologize or admit when they're wrong to their kids, or to other people in front of their kids. Your children will remember all the times you hurt their feelings, and then try to pretend like it never happened. They will remember the cashier you yelled at for a mistake that you made, but won't say sorry for. They'll either turn into an asshole or they'll overcompensate, and feel responsible for everything that goes wrong, because you set a horrible example. Using your kids as an emotional dumping ground. My mom has always told me everything bad in her life. She always tells me about her issues with my dad. It makes me super uncomfortable, so I keep telling her to get professional help which she does for a while, but doesn't stick to it. Physically punishing and screaming at your kid for fessing up to an honest mistake. I accidentally broke a window when I was 5 and told the truth about it. I was promptly spanked pretty vigorously and sent to my room and told to stay in there. What did I take away from that? Lie if it prevents you from getting into any sort of trouble. I was a pretty dishonest kid 4 years after that. Train their kids to be doormats. Drop what you're doing and do whatever I or any adult you know tells you to is a reasonable rule for a 5 year old, but tons of parents continue to enforce that upon teenagers because it's more convenient to them for their teenagers to be doormats, and then big shock, they grow up to be adult doormats, unable to stand up for themselves or even assert their own desires. <laughs> Refusing to admit when they're wrong. It's actually very hard to admit you're wrong and not trying to make excuses, but it can have a negative impact on kids. No matter what achievements one makes, the parent relates it to a failure. Nice job making Eagle Scout. If only your grades were better. Good work mowing the lawn. But you cold and do the dishes. I can't believe you lasted this long living on your own driving a forklift. FCKU, mom. Last I checked I'm employed, not in debt, and going back to school, while completely supporting myself. I'm doing pretty goddamned well for someone my age. Given when kid is being demanding or throwing a tantrum, and I don't mean giving in once in a while, to keep the peace in a public place, I mean every time. I found a dollar outside once, when I was about 9, I was with my 4 to 5 year old neighbor who got really jealous, and demanded I give it to her. I refused frick you, I found a dollar and I'm a 9 year old that's a big deal, and she ran home to her mom upset and about to cry. Her mom tried to explain, that I found it, so it was mine only one time, before she solved the issue, by grabbing a dollar from her purse, and tossing it into the bushes, while her daughter's back was turned. Hey look, there's another one. Now you found one too. That kid was a nightmare with a very warped definition of fairness. Edit, a lot of you are saying this was an okay way to handle the situation. And it would have been I think, if it were an isolated incident. It was not. She was spoiled rotten and her favorite way to handle no was hitting, scratching, hair pulling, and biting. Discipline wasn't really a thing in her house. She was an actual nightmare child and she didn't outgrow it for a long long time. Also consider this, the lesson this little girl is learning, is that the world will bend to her will, whenever she gets upset. Not only will mom and dad give her what she demands, but apparently so will the universe. Not letting the kid express themselves, my parents tried really hard with me, but they really screwed me up with their helicopter parenting. I wasn't allowed to wear t-shirts with cartoon characters. For example because they were childish I was 13, or floral print, because it's for old people. As a result I was dressed, like I was 30 years old for most of my life every birthday party I went to, I was the best dressed, and not in a Roshi looks precious way, but moreover I thought this was a kids party, why is she dressed formally kind of way.
As an adult I don't know what's socially appropriate to wear most places, and my fashion sense is really... Interesting. Not appreciating their accomplishments. Some parents don't bother telling their 5 year olds how good their drawings are. A kid's drawing might not be the most beautiful in the world, but it should be appreciated, because these kids put a lot of effort in it. Same with only telling kids what is wrong with their writing slash ideas, and never giving them credit for what they did well. My best friend's dad would destroy her papers, and when she clearly outclassed him in writing skill, he doubled down on correcting her grammar, punctuation, arguing over word choice. He would say he was just trying to make her a better writer, but because she never got praise, and was only shown how wrong her work was, she still doesn't believe how good she really is. Telling them how expensive it is to raise a child. Seriously. A kid should not have to worry about family finances, or feeling like a bird. Not letting your child experience boredom. It isn't your job to keep your children entertained. Provide them a safe place to explore and play, and sit on your hands and watch. Since this is Reddit I should add that this doesn't mean you should go to an extreme. Simplicity Parenting is a great book that explains this much better than I can. It has completely changed how my wife and I interact with our daughter while she's playing. Basically we provide some toys and a safe area and keep an eye on her, only getting involved if she invites us or if she does something not safe and even then we do our best to stretch our comfort zone. Using food to combat boredom or a bad mood, it might calm down or distract an agitated kid to give him Cheerios, but you're basically teaching boredom eating. Giving ice cream to a kid to get that to stop crying will encourage that person to reach for food when fear in a bad mood as an adult like I do. Avoid talking to them about six. Seriously, parents. Do you really want your kid's sixth grade friends telling them what six is? Do you really expect that? By avoiding the topic, your kids will never have sex, or, if they do, they'll magically know about appropriate behaviors and birth control, and protection from disease? That goes for pronoun too. You need to tell your kids about pronoun. When they get to a certain age the right age is up for debate. Your kids will see pronoun, and you need to be the one to tell them what it is, and that it's for entertainment and most of it isn't how two people in love have sex. Forcing your kids to eat when they're not hungry is really really unhealthy. I know so many people myself included who had parents or grandparents who insisted they clean their plate. Growing up, I didn't really eat when I was hungry. I ate at meal times, and I ate everything on my plate. That's just how I was brought up. My parents meant well, I know. They fed me pretty healthy foods, so it's not like I was being force fed Big Macs. They didn't want me to waste food and they wanted to make sure I was getting enough nutrition. So I don't fault their intentions. But it's only now, when I'm almost 30, that I'm actually figuring out how to decide whether or not I'm actually hungry. I ate by the clock for so long that I never really learned how to pay attention to my own body and follow its cues for deciding when to eat and how much. I'm working on that now, but it's surprisingly difficult to figure that stuff out when you're not used to it. Lots of people end up with lifelong weight issues because they had parents or family members who pushed them to ignore what their body was telling them and just keep eating past the point of satiation. It's really hard to unlearn that shoot. Parents should, as much as possible, let their kids decide when to eat and how much they want to eat. I think it's okay to impose some restrictions, like telling your kid, if you don't want to eat any more of your lunch, that's okay, but you won't be getting anything else until dinner time. But you have to let kids stop eating when they decide they aren't hungry anymore. Telling them that they're smart as opposed to praising their hard work, I'm not advocating calling a kid stupid. Emphasizing intelligence, interpreted as an innate trait, sets the kid up for failure when they come to a situation that's too hard. I, E, am smart, but not smart enough for this. Instead, recognize the effort and the thought process they put into figuring things out or doing schoolwork, so they're ready to take on increasing challenges. Edit holy shoot, gold. Thanks, I'm genuinely sorry that so many people can relate to this, but reading all the comment replies, it looks like a few people are just realizing it. And some of you are young.
Understanding the problem is the first step to overcoming it. Guys, we can do it. I believe this happens in the US more than other countries, based solely on personal experience. They tease their kids for having crushes, and liking the opposite sex, and or also expect kids, to go through a cooties phase, even though many do not. At least I did not. Then kids grow up shy and weird around the opposite sex, like they should be embarrassed to like someone romantically. Then the adults are all, why aren't you married? What's wrong with you? Yelling. There's very little reason to yell, it's one of the easier ways out of a hard situation. If your child's doing something wrong then reason with them as a parent talking to a child. Don't jump straight to yelling at them to stop without any rhyme or reason. Even if it's something they didn't do wrong like got lost, or they got hurt, why yell at them over your concern for them being okay? Why make them feel worse, and that it's their fault? Obviously it's hard and the fact that you have to do it every day, all the time is even harder, but try your best to be that role model for your kids. Don't have them grow up and shudder or cringe every time they hear a loud noise or loud footsteps. There's no reason to grow anxiety into a child. Thinking bad behavior and backtalk is cute when they're little, then wondering why they tell you to go frick yourself when they're third up. You created this. My cousin has kids and she's raising them how she was raised. Without discipline, they came to our house, ripped up plants from the garden, and threw them in the pool. The emptied out prescription medicine they found in the kitchen. At lunch they sat at the table and banged it like a drum for hours. They threw ketchup pockets all over the place. The list goes on. It's not my place to discipline kids, but giving birth does not qualify you to be a parent. Oh and her 5 year old and 2 year old are obese, as she and her husband are. Sick people. Pe Give them everything they want, and when they don't get something, beach and moan until they do. Life doesn't work that way. Pay attention to your kids. Pay attention to your kids. Pay the fuck attention to your kids. When that kid shows you something they made, or wants to talk about some kid thing has really excited about, list don't give them that hello, that's nice honey line. Actually listen to them about what they're saying. Believe it or not, kids often can tell when you don't give a shoot. Yeah, it gets kind of annoying sometimes, but it might just do some good for them as they grow up. My parents were awesome, but did this so often that as I grew up, I didn't really speak much, because I knew nobody really cared what I had to say, or wanted to hear about any of the boring things I was interested in. I still do this to this day. Please, guys. You see it in those relationship threads all the time. To listen to your so, when they drone on about something they're passionate about. Why would you not do that for your kid too? thing that got me was my parents, especially dad, always telling me, if I can't be happy, fake it. Which really was just the icing on the cake of his principle of no emotional expression besides just being happy, angry, upset about something, no one can know. Feeling sad. Suck it up buttercup. Really fricked up how I feel about expressing emotions these days, even now when in 30. I find myself constantly apologizing for being anything that isn't a ball of sunshine. Say something incredibly damaging to a child's self esteem i.e. you're fat, and you need to lose weight etc, and then when the child speaks up about their hurt feelings about it, turn the blame on them, and cover up their words under the guise of it's just tough love just that phrase in particular it's just tough love alone really screwed me up for the longest time because I just kept taking verbal abuse after verbal abuse from my mom for years thinking it was just tough love. I see a lot of parents fail to follow through with punishments or let them off early for good behavior. I used to hate this as a kid as I felt the lesson had already been learned, but sticking to exactly one week without privileges. For example, instead of giving in after a few days of sucking up and apologizing, makes kids understand that there are real consequences to their actions, and that kissing as doesn't mean a thing after they already made a mistake. Telling your kids they have to spend time with family members slash family friends, and have to be nice simply because they're family. It builds a lot of resentment, because if you're forcing them to be around people they don't like, or who make them uncomfortable, they're going to be in a hurry to move out, and never come back. Social worker of 25 years here, and I can tell you the number one thing is trying to be their friend not their parents. 
kids need a calm authority figure to enforce rules and expectations, especially teenagers. Kids need to have reasonable boundaries and expectations and need to know that they will be enforced and that their behavior has repercussions. It can also swing too far in the other direction. My sisters and I were constantly told to listen to our physically slash emotionally abusive parents and not to disrespect them because we're not your friends, we're your parents. Once we became adults they were constantly whining about why we didn't want to discuss our personal lives with them or talk to them on the phone for more than a couple minutes or come to them for advice. I actually had to explain it to my father once that I can suddenly become his buddy like flipping a light switch. I don't hate them, and we get together for family gatherings slash events slash birthdays. But when they ask personal questions I often have to tell them that it's none of their business. I won't be any more inclined to tell them about my personal shoot than I would a co-worker. Mixing up the relationship between confidence and skill slash ability. Kids and people in general gain confidence from being proficient in what they are doing. They do not gain proficiency from being confident. Aka. Successful kids are confident because they have the skills and abilities to accomplish a thee goals. Making a kid confident when they don't have the skill slash ability to back it up just turns them into doucher bags. If they find out that the child did something to break one of their rules, they approach them from the standpoint of I caught you, rather than what happened that made you want to do this. Strict parents make sneaky kids. Not being happy with the work that their kids put in for example let's say someone gets 1B and the rest are as. It is very triggering when you go show your parent your grades expecting a congratulations or something of that nature. But what you actually get is a 10 minute speech on how you still have room for improvement. Talking to babies and kids in a baby voice with bad vocabulary and grammar. They grow up not knowing how to form proper sentences, mispronouncing words, and having very limited vocabulary. My stepbrother couldn't say ours until he was 9 and was generally bad at talking. It confused me until I met his mom the first time and witnessed her talking to her 7 year old son like he was too. I hate parents that go out somewhere with their kids and tell them that the worker slash security guard slash police slash etc will punish you them if they misbehave. Discipline your own kids, you lazy freaks. Also, teach them the world is a scary place and to be afraid of everything and everyone outside your hometown. I'm 22 and still get nervous in other places because my mom was so nervous and uptight about it. Shame them for their emotions. You tell a kid to stop crying. Or to calm down you're really telling them it's unacceptable to show emotion. Kids should be allowed to honor their feelings. Edit. This is mostly in reference to young kids. 3 and under. A lot of damage can be done at that age. Well. It depends. As a parent I have to say that telling a kid to stop crying because they're crying is inconveniencing you is a deck move. If they are that freaked out that their knee is bleeding, so be it. I try to be really really attentive to that, even if I'm internally rolling my eyes. Yes, I know it's traumatic that your band-aid came off your 4 day old scrape and you can see it, it'll get you a new one. If you're crying because I told you to brush your teeth after giving you 3 warnings that we were going to start bedtime in 5 minutes, in 2 minutes, in 1 minute. I may tell you to sdf you. Politely though. That said, I always try to say that it's okay be angry, it's just not always okay to scream and cry. Let's sit down and draw together for a minute or hug for a minute, or try to breathe for a minute and calm ourselves down. You can be pissed that it's brushing time, but you can't always throw yourself 